my name is Vio Ganella. I'm a computer engineer and my and I worked on the Davis day I was involved in the design of the database for this project. Hello, my name is Roberto Battistoni. I'm an electrical engineering major and I worked on the circuit design and circuit fabrication for this project. And my name is Alexander Van Wallenhoven. I'm an electrical engineering major and I have also been working on this circuit design. As concerns regarding climate change continue to grow, people look for individual ways to contribute to the planet's health. One such solution would be the cultivation of plants, though their caretakers may be unaware of their necessities. The purpose of this project is to design an electronic plant probe that facilitates urban gardening by displaying how well the plant's needs are met. This product will not only offer a flexibility in the incorporated sensors, but also informative monitoring by collecting data regularly and presenting it in a convenient app. So the need for this project is that those who are responsible for taking care of plants need to know basic things about the environment that their plants are in, such as the moisture of the soil, the temperature and the humidity that the plants are exposed to, as well as the lighting conditions. And with the current sensors on the market, most of them are unreliable in terms of lasting long and having reliable measurements. The mission of this project is to create a product that's currently better than what is in the marketplace and better than cheap resistive measurement uh, probes that their tips oxidize and as time goes on, their readings become less and less accurate. <clears throat> and to solve that, we used probes that are more replaceable and use capacitive measurements. So with this in mind, we researched what was currently available on the market and found that the available solutions roughly fall into four categories. They are things like soil test strips, for example, like litmus paper. There are te chemical test kits where you essentially just buy a kit with a number of different chemical testing um, things. You can also get portable soil meter tools, which are essentially analog versions of what we've made and they also then return only really one value usually. And then finally, you have our category, which is electronic in soil plant monitors. So our project, in summary, will allow people to monitor the plants when either nearby or on the go. It will measure, record, and analyze the moisture, temperature, sunlight, and humidity of the environment surrounding the plants and it will present this data in a user-friendly app interface. It will store this data and process it so that it can be easily accessed. And it will respond to these measurements by automatically watering the plants if needed. So this is the sequence diagram describing the interaction between the app, the smart probe, the server, and the database. First, the user creates a new account or logs into an existing one. Either method will then allow them to connect their probe to the server by sending it the Wi-Fi credentials through Bluetooth, causing the database to associate this device with, to the signed-in user. The probe then uploads its measurements to the server by itself at regular intervals, and the app can access the data by viewing the produced tables and graphs. Additionally, the smart probe can activate a solenoid valve if it detects a low moisture valve level in order to water the plant. In this uh, use case diagram, it shows the way this Grow My Data app will work. First, there'll be a person. The person will then create an account by by uh, inputting an email and password in there. And then end the app, they could press a button and then it'll, it'll be able to record the measurements. It will also automatically trigger a hose, which will automatically why the plants and then when they record measurements it'll store the measurements and from the stored measurements it'll show it to the user the user will also be able to adjust the settings of the app and by pressing another button we'll be able to take a picture of said plant in the app
So this is our related theory, uh, capacitive moisture calibration. And for this, you set, um, we set dry air as being zero, being no moisture whatsoever. And we set pure water as being 100. And so when we calibrated our probes, we were able just to calibrate um, by putting them in water and then I mean, I can share my <coughs> getting readings from them and measuring the voltage when they are completely submerged in water. So now we're getting into the specifics of the hardware design and we'll start with the light detection circuit. Now in, a, in our first iteration, which you can see on the left, we tried to use a photodiode to measure it. However, a photodiode outputs a very small current, which in order to be useful, needs to be amplified and converted into a voltage, which we would need a transimpedance amp for, which you can see on the schematic. However, as the project went on, we changed this to instead use an LDR, a light detecting resistor, which works is a lot simpler and it's a lot cheaper, although the, the trade-off is that it does not quite give as accurate of a measurement. So for this project, we used um, the VH400 moisture sensors. Um, these are capacitive sensors, as I mentioned earlier. And the reason why we selected them, despite them being more, way more expensive than, say, an analog probe, these last longer and are incredibly durable. As I just demonstrated, you can literally calibrate them with a glass of water. And yeah, that's why we chose them. <laughs> and the project, um, it's not able, to, it's not just able to get measurements, it's also able to actuate the solenoid valve to water plants via a soaker hose. Um, I have a demonstration of it working just without anything, Peter, if you wanna play the video. I don't know if you can hear the clicking, it's kind of loud when it does open and close. And here we have the power supply. On the left, you can see our first iteration of it where it got its power from a wall outlet. The power comes in, it's transformed, it is rectified into DC, and using two voltage regulators, it is then outputted into two different branches, one to power the sensors and one to power the Arduino. Unfortunately, our uh, power supply was not did not have the power to uh, actuate the valve at most uh, pressures, only very little pressures was able to do. <clears throat> oh, and so for our hardware, for our probe design, we used uh, several P and N channel MOSFETs to be able to turn on and off the moisture sensors, as well as communicate with the driver that drives the solenoid valve um, on and off based off of our pulse width modulation pins, which we used because we couldn't run the solenoid continuously without it overheating. This was our preliminary design for the home screen of the app with a list of your plants and measurements as well as colors indicating the desirability. Since December, I've been implementing the app using the Flutter IDE and the Dart language through the Visual Studio Code application and debugging it with an Android Studio emulator that VS Code utilizes. Flutter was chosen because it can create native apps in both iOS and Android systems, although iOS build requires certification process, so we merely stuck to Android for this demonstration. My goal was to replicate this design as closely as possible. These are some of the iterations the homepage has undergone. It started with just a sidebar navigation bar, and then I added a list view builder to display the plants. I then started to flesh this display out by adding colors and icons. And the final iteration on the right brings it very close to the preliminary design 
adding pictures, units, decimal precision, plant renaming, and the ability to press and hold the icon to obtain some feedback. These are the iterations of the user page. It started off as a simple two field form and a submission button. So then I next edited the appearance and added functionality and validation to the forms. Third iteration, I added a create a new account button and the sign up process for that, which involves querying the database to see which email addresses are already registered. And that the fourth iteration changes the page when logged in, allowing the user to sign out or change their password. On the left are two plant page iterations. It was initially just a data table widget with a plant name, ID, and most recent reading, but I later added the ability to tap on a row to display all the readings for that plant. Additionally, the button on this page is what leads to the Bluetooth synchronization process. On the right are two statistics page iterations. I first tried graphing using the FL charts package, but it was incompatible with the date time objects that each reading uses to store its timestamp, so I switched to charts flutter package that can use date time as X coordinates. At the end, we have two simple pages. The left is the tips page, which just contains general points of gardening advice. And the right is the settings page where the user can adjust their settings. We will see the app in more detail in our demonstration later. So this part of the software design involves the database iterations. Now, this was a long process, which took many iterations. The very first uh, notable iteration happened when I used the Microsoft SQL Management Studio. The reason this iteration did not continue was that the it was based on a private server in which like no one in the group could access or even the app. The Amazon RDS showed some good signs of being used as the database. However, I had like a student account and the eventually it shut me off because I didn't have enough uh, uh, funds to fund the Amazon RDS, no matter how much I tried. And But however, the, the benefit from the Amazon RDS was that it could be accessible to all group members. However, like it was not accessible to the app. That's why this idea was dropped. The Progress SQL was also another idea, which involved using another SQL soft another SQL like database. Long story short, we did not use these this database because, because it could not be accessible to the group members or yeah, pretty much the other two database iterations. So the day the database that was eventually used was the PHP my admin database, which could be found on triple zero webhost.com and from this database, we are. It's called the conservatory because it will store the plant values, and just like a natural conservatory that stores the actual plants. The users will, as you see here, the users will have an email password, login password, and name, and the plants will have some features like the plant ID and the email address and plant name. And for the plant traits, we'll be able to show, we are able to store uh, important data of the plant, like the temperature and temperature quality. So and then we were able to send an email out to a person. So the person that we tested on was me. And, I, and it says, and you can see from the email that we're able to add an attachment, also write uh, a, a unique email for each person based off the, the, na the name variable from the previous database. This shows the database readings. This shows that this actually stores the readings from the actual plant. And these show some examples of the PHP code involved, which this involves getting the users, and this one involves uploading the readings. This will be useful in testing out whether or not a user exists. And if it does exist, in that case, you can't make an account underneath that email address. And upload the readings would allow the uploading of the plant traits based off the sensors, the temperature sensor, the humidity sensor, the moisture sensor, and the sunlight sensor into the data table. And also we managed to create the quality, the moisture qualities too. So based off these results, it was overall a big success. We were able to uh, create, we were able 
to obtain information about the table. We're able to add people to the table. We're able to update the table. And we're able to send an email about an account creation. However, the only failure that was found in this software integration was that we can't send a .csv file through an email. The reason that is, is because it requires a premium subscription for that the free database web host did not have. So. And this is our project schedule. As you can see, we began at the start of last semester with planning and researching for this project. And we've continued throughout designing it, ordering parts, developing the app, database, and the hardware, testing it, and fixing bugs. And we are now at the presentation. And for our future work, we have some list of things that could be implemented in the future. Um, for one, like Jason mentioned earlier, our, so far, we only have an Android build because an iOS build requires a complicated certification process. However, this would be very beneficial to add. We would also be interested in expanding the app to give tips to based on exactly which plant you're using. However, as you can imagine, this would require a very big database of independently sourced um, you know, botany facts. For the database, we would love to implement push notifications. And like Vito mentioned, we also would want to have the ability to email out CSV files. However, due to bureaucracy, we haven't been able to implement that yet. We would also like to have more powerful algorithms for feedback and the ability to specify the type of plant, which will then change how it gets analyzed. And for the probe, we would want to work on improving the power supply changing the circuitry to a PCB, adding a either constructed or 3D printed casing for the probe, plus potentially add other parameters to measure, such as pH, soil temperature, heat index, water flow, and the wavelength of the light. And here is a breakdown of the cost of the probe. As we've mentioned, and as you can probably see, a lot of the cost comes from the Vegetronics VH400 moisture sensors. Now, this is not unwarranted because they are very good products, especially compared to other things on the market. And even despite that, the total price of roughly $360 is still fairly competitive compared to, the, compared to similar products on the market. For the software demonstration of the Grow My Data app and database, I have two separate recordings. The one on the left running the app on a debug Android emulator used by Visual Studio Code and the one on the right putting a debug build on an actual Android phone. Currently, we are not signed in, so most of the pages hold no information. The user page here lets us sign in or create an account. Both of these forms include input validation, so that empty fields will give you this error. Short passwords will be rejected. And if we enter an email that already exists in the database, such as email at email.com, which we can see here. And let's put in a username and a sufficiently long password. Then it'll tell you that the email is already in use. So let's use something else. Let's use this email address. Tells you that registration is complete. And if we check the database, we see that the user has been added. And after creating the account, we receive an email verifying that the account has been created. While signed in, we could sign out or change the password by entering the old password and the new password. This account is new, so it won't have any plants. So we can go to the plant page and connect the probe via Bluetooth. It also provide the Wi-Fi credentials needed to let the probe reach the database. But we already have an account set up with plants, so we can sign out here and log into the existing sample account which I've shown earlier to be email at email.com. So 
So on the home page, we see four plants here, their most recent readings, their names, some pictures taken earlier with this button that have been cached, and some feedback on the readings if we hold the icon. So this is this one needs more light, this one needs more water, while this one need ha, has too much water. The plant name can be altered. And it will update the database accordingly. Right here. So to get new readings, you pull down on the home page to query the database and refresh the page. Like so. The first moisture sensor is on a desk which explains the zero moisture reading. The second and third moisture sensors are in plant pots, and the fourth is in a cup of water, which is why it's 100% moist. The plants share sunlight temperature and humidity readings because they will be similar due to, due to the close vicinity of the plants. The plant page provides the time of the most recent reading, and tapping a plant here will bring up a full list of its readings sorted by time. Since the probe is currently operating in a stable condition, we get only slightly different readings. So the light only varies by a magnitude of about 100. The humidity and temperature don't vary that much. And the upload rate is about once every 20 seconds, as seen here. Although the, it will be much higher when sold as a product. The statistics page then graphs every plant at once on separate plots that each focus on a different parameter. In particular, light, humidity, and temperature are the same for these four, but adding another device would produce another line on the plots. And you can see the small variations in the heights of the graph that we've seen in the database. small variations. We also have a simple tips page here, which shares some general plant care advice and good practices, such as watering to the soil rather than the leaves or the stem. And finally, we have the settings page where we can set the timing of newly registered plants when syncing them with Bluetooth, the temperature unit that you want your readings to be in. So this changes all the displays to Celsius, like the home page, the plant page, and the graphs. Push notification settings and dark mode, which is just a visual preference. For the software demonstration of the So here we have our hardware demonstration. This is a solenoid valve being actuated. Because we use pulse width modulation, you can actually see the pulse width modulation in the, the stream of the water, that it's not one continuous stream, it's several bursts. And here, this is um, what we mainly intend to do is hook it up to a soaker hose, so that way plants can directly be irrigated. For this project, we have naturally made sure to follow any relevant code standards and constraints. For our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections, this meant following IEEE protocols regarding specific frequencies and bit rates to use. For the web pages used by the database and app, 
we followed HTTP protocols. And for the hardware, we made sure to use UL compliant components, as well as follow NEC guidelines for electrical connections. For the IEEE ethics that were followed by this team, the team was able to create decisions that were beneficial to the safety, healthy, and welfare of the public. The team will show any environmental factors that can harm the public. The team will be honest, was honest and realistic in claims and data from the project. The team will accept, would accept any criticisms so that the errors can be corrected and cred be contributed to the correct individuals. The team will avoid injuring others, poverty, reputation, or employment by false or malicious actions. The team will treat fairly all persons, regardless of such factors as race, religion, gender, civility, age, or national origin. The team will assist each other when they need help in professional development and following this code of ethics. So the engineering complexity of this project incorporated elements of electrical engineering, both in powering the probe and uh, the solenoid valve and having it run, as well as computer engineering in uh, our app design and development and linking the database to uh, our pro, as well as um, a fair degree of mechanical engineering in terms of uh, water pressures and pipe connections in doing the irrigation with the solenoid valve. Any questions?